I know that it's, uh, first of all, it's Friday. Secondly, it's the last day of the conference. And additionally, it's just after the lunch. So probably everyone is already tired and sleepy. So I really appreciate your patience and your discipline that you've joined the session uh, to listen to me today. Um, so yeah, what we are going to talk about is type data. Um, this is a um, low-level, very important API in Drupal. Um, but uh, I would say it's definitely, definitely very, very um, well undocumented one. So that is why probably it stays quite a mystery for many. Um, so today I will uh, try to make you understand it uh, in as easy as possible way to consume. I've modified this uh, presentation a bit before this um, this Bulga session because of the last day and the uh, and the after lunch, as I said. So um, yeah, I guess we can go. Uh, Anton Pakulski, I'm from Poland, um, working as a Drupal developer at Box. You may ask what the box is. So according to the official description, box is a single source collaboration platform built for managing the entire content lifecycle. Um, but the definition for human beings is simply it's a content enterprise content cloud um, with very a lot of cool features. Uh, we have um, 97,000 clients right now. And uh, as I'm correct, it's 68% of the Fortune 500. Uh, companies. So uh, you may ask me, okay, man, so what, what's your responsibilities there, right? Because you are a Drupal developer. So I'm working in a um, marketing team, so I'm responsible for all the internal and external uh, marketing sites, which are, of course, powered by Drupal. Um, yeah, I'm working with Drupal since the late version 7, so uh, comparing to uh, a lot of experienced guys here, I uh, was a little bit late on the party. But before that, I used to be a Symfony developer, so when I joined the um, Drupal team, it was uh, quite fun because guys were asking about Drupal 7 and Symfony components, and I was asking about a lot of uh, Drupalisms I had to learn. Uh, um, yeah, so you can find me on socials like, um, of course, Drupal Org, LinkedIn, and I also have my YouTube channel. Cool. I guess this is the perfect time to say a big thank you for the whole uh, Drupal Developer Days Burgas team. Thank you for organizing this event, and um, I'm very impressed by the sessions, by the organization, and overall feeling. Um, so thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a um, real honor. Um, it's not my first time in Bulgaria, it's actually the third one visit. Uh, I'm staying with my family in Sarafovo, so I'm taking short bus trip um, each day, every day to meet with, with you guys. Yeah, let's look in the agenda. Uh, I don't know if it's visible, hopefully yes. So, um, we will start with answering question, why we need some type, some type of um, low-level API in Drupal. Uh, what are the reasons there? What are the, um, where they are coming from? If they are coming from PHP, Drupal, whatever. And then we'll quickly see into some history facts, how the decision was made to implement it, how the process was looking like, and so on. Um, then we we'll answer the question, what the API really is and what it, how it's working. Then, um, what are the main components, then we will be ready to finally see how content entities are built on top of uh, this API. If you joined the session previously that from Tobias, I guess, uh, about the custom entities, this, is, this might be a good extension for the session. Um, then we'll go quickly through some use cases and um, hopefully in the very end will be a few seconds for some questions. Um, we will start very, very easy and light, so don't be disappointed by the complexity in the beginning, but we will be climbing up very, very fa in a very, very fast pace to uh, see some complexities here. So, yeah, let's start with some basics. Questions for, um, for the audience. Don't be shy. Uh, how good do you know PHP? 
Anyone knows how many variable building types PHP currently has? I'm listening for answers. Throw some numbers into me. What do you think? We have string, integer. How many? Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Someone said? Ten. 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 Anyone else? Any ideas? Five. Five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's look into the official documentation then. We have nine building types. So as you can see, it might be the first point why well, maybe we need some wrapper for our data and Jupyter because even though we have so many experienced developer, developers here, we aren't quite sure how many building types we have in PHP, right? Is so, enum not? Hmm? Enum not. Enum. Is enum not a data type by this point? Um, I guess it's not, uh, at least according to the official PHP documentation. Um, so you may ask me because the new new integer full string array object it's pretty straightforward. So I was always thinking that it's seven, but it's not. You can have also callable, which is um, some method or function in a class, uh, which then can be uh, called by call user function, and it's going to be callable. And the resource, which is indeed a resource uh, outside of PHP, for example, the FTP, right? So. Um, isn't it remarkable that, as I said, <laughs> we aren't quite sure how many building types we have? Oh, sorry, not this slide. Oh, come on. Work with me. All right. Going further, as we all know very well, PHP is a uh, dynamically typed language. So, um, it means that uh, different values can be represented by different, uh, different types, um, absolutely with no uh, restrictions. So then, when using the list compilation for them, uh, the same values can give you absolutely random results, as you can see uh, from this table. So um, probably that is why we shouldn't use um, this list compilation. <laughs> so if you will look into the strict one, it's uh, way more stable, a lot of forces here. So uh, that is why it's a good visualization why we should stick with the strict conversion. But we still have the question, can we be sh completely sure what uh, the data type we are going to expect from external function, external API, whatever. So then, why we need type data in terms of PHP? We cannot rely on of, of the type of certain data, as we said. We cannot be really sure that one is indeed a one oftentimes. So we either use this list comparison, which is not good in the end of the day. So maybe we will need something more. Uh, yeah, let's examine these two integer types. Um, and again, question for the audience. Do you recognize what's the difference between them? Any ideas? I can see the lunch was very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one is a timestamp, but in PHP we cannot have um, this additional metadata to we use an integer as a timestamp in the core meaning. Um, so yes, however, in some cases, it will be useful to be able to define some kind of an abstract type to collect this additional information, right? Cool, so we um, just uh, look quickly through the uh, PHP reasons. Let's look into the history. So what was the problem with Drupal 7 then? Um, Drupal 7, as you probably remember, or you are still working with it, keeps all the data in this giant associative arrays, right? So there was no absolute API to handle this data and additional information. So there was no consistent way of defining data type, uh, like timestamp, string, and so on. Everything was uh, mixed into, the, um, into these giant tables. Uh, it was possible, but it was pretty tricky to say if field is translatable or not. Uh, access levels also were hard to define, possible, but <laughs> tricky. And probably the famous, famous hook field validate. So the um, uh, validation was decoupled from field API, which was pretty um, disappointing. Uh, and writing a lot of code in this. Oh, sorry. My, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Actually, yeah. I guess my touchpad is doing some stupid things here. And in the end, 
uh, last but not least, it was very hard to build machine readable API for the data access because of um, the, it was not easy to traverse throughout the data and the associative files and get the additional information what the data really is. So uh, if you're interested you, interested, you can go and see the rest module um, in Drupal 7, how tricky it was. And then, of course, community was aware of all of these problems, so they've decided to let's do some refactoring. So they created this um, Drupal work uh, thread to implement the API to unify entity properties and fields. It was more about um, refactoring the field API and decoupling it and so on. So that was a short mention that maybe we will need some kind of a property API. They um, they had the idea. They had the idea that uh, we probably will have to have some something to wrap the data and add this additional meaning. So the ideas for naming was let's call it metadata. Let's call it property data. But in the end of the day, they've called it type data. That is why it is called like that. Of course, very important question pop up, popped up back the day. Isn't it an overkill to implement a um, separated low-level API just for the sake for describing entity properties? But um, the community was able to show a bunch of places that will be beneficiary from this API, including something like property API, blocks, layouts, rules, Action APIs, tokens, CMI, metadata, semantic mappings, template variables. So there was a decision that yes, we can go with it. They prepared this description uh, how it should behave. Um, it's pretty modest that the um, data API should uh, will be a data model that will consist of uh, data list, complex data, and data primitives. Pretty straightforward. But what's important here? Here is that it sh uh, all the data types may be mapped into the building primitives, which are predefined. What it means, it's simply you should be, it should be easily castable whenever the representation of data type will be to any kind of primitive type, so then it will be machine-readable API. So it shouldn't be so hard to build, for example, the uh, REST from the data representation, REST JSON response, whatever you, you would like to see there. They prepared this, uh, this interesting table. Uh, I want you to look from the left to the right. So on the left, they've uh, designed some basic data types. Uh, I guess right now the list is a little bit longer. I, I will show you in, um, later in the beginning, in the end. Um, and this table is showing how this, uh, these data types will be further casted into some more primitive data, right? So we have something like string, boolean, integer, flow, day, duration, URI, and binary. For example, the duration can be uh, then casted to the date interval object, and then it can be casted to um, piece of string, um, integer, whatever you would like to have, right? So this was a very important um, design uh, description that we need this API to be able to cast the data easily. Why? Because, I don't know if it's visible, but because if you build a multi-level complexity representation of the data, it should be easily casted to some other representation like JSON string, for example, in this case. You can see that we have at least two levels of complexity, the data lists, uh, and inside the data list we have some primitive data. Right? Cool. So decisions were made, uh, the process was ongoing, and finally they decided that let's go with separate, uh, let's decouple this uh, effort from the refactoring of field API and create this separate issue for this type data. And um, the title of this uh, Drupal thread is definitely answering all the questions what the API is. So it's allowing metadata to be associated with data, right? <laughs> cool. And as you can see, it's closed, which is good, but not always obvious. And then Finally, finally, with Drupal, uh, Drupal 8, we've welcomed the um, uh, type data. And right now, all the associated files that you can see on the right are going to be represented by this abstract, abstract layer going from the top in terms of nodes, its entity. Then inside of it, you may expect some properties. And inside of them, 
the properties may have items, and the items finally may have some values. So cool, right now we have this beautiful, beautiful um, abstract representation. And now, um, because we are um, done with the history, you may ask me where to go to know more about this API, right? So besides joining the session, of course, you can go to Drupal.org. You will find there a couple of bullet points which are completely valid overview, plugins, definitions, and some computer properties. So you're not ready. Uh, looking inside of it, uh, looking inside of it, you will uh, find a pretty modest description with some class names, interfaces names, and so on. Uh, but at least in my case, it's not giving you the um, proper image why this API is so important, why we, when, and where we are using it, uh, and so on. You can also find the, my favorite one. Okay, yeah, my favorite one, diagram. I was well visiting this guy for many times, and uh, I'm not sure if I understand it still. <laughs> So I, I'm not going to use it today to try to explain the things to you guys. So I'm calling the chicken diagram. Okay, yeah, the chicken diagram because it's similar to chicken, right? So if not Drupal work, what you can do? Of course, you can grab the book from Daniel Sipos. Um, in my case, uh, when I was the first time preparing this presentation, was Drupal 8 wanted development, the second edition, if I'm correct. Uh, before this presentation, I've updated my uh, book store with Drupal 10. Uh, the description of this API is pretty s similar, some slight changes, but still the same. I must admit it's a great book, and I believe that every developer should read it in some point of the um, of their life. But stay alert during the process if you are not drinking too much coffee, or um, your family is not starting to hate you because this book is very time consuming, I guess, at least for me, and um, hard to digest. So, what do you have inside? <coughs> Uh, the author was kind enough to provide us seven from nearly, nearly 600 pages book dedicated to this very important API. Cool. Um, what you will find there is a stream of, again, class names, property names, um, plugins, and whatever you might imagine, but also some pretty, I guess, straightforward examples, but no diagrams, no further explanations. Even the author on the very end of this section is saying, I know this is a very hard section to follow. Don't worry, you can always get back. I just want you to know, let, let you to know that we have this kind of an API, right? So simply what I've done, I grabbed all the information from um, <coughs> Drupal work and from this book and con converted it to easy to um, be digested way for you guys today. Um, so what is type data? First of all, it grabs values of any kind of complexity. This is very important because you can grab some primitive types, but then you can build more and more and more complex structure, and you can wrap it with more and more uh, complex definitions for them. Secondly, it gives the meaning for the data it wraps. So whenever we have the wrapper, you can imagine, you remember the example of the integer type, right? So when we are going to wrap this with this uh, additional information that this is indeed a timestamp, right? Good example, a license plate. Um, we have at least three pieces of information here. The number, the license plate number, the, the country code, the flag, and then we are wrapping this information together. And then we know indeed this is a license plate, right? Going further, next example, the nutrition, nutrition pack sticker. Without the knowledge that this is a sticker, nutrition pack sticker, it will be just a random list of ingredients, right? But when we will inject some values into the ingredients and give it this wrapper and the meaning, it's a completely different uh, creature then. And then you can imagine you can give it uh, different values, different instance, different values, different instance. All right, good. Uh, yeah, so we are, I guess, ready for the main components. The main components of this API because um, we are still close after the lunch. I will stick with some cooking examples and food. So we have three components. I would like you to pay attention and try to at least <laughs> uh, leave this room with this information that we have the three main components for this API. First of all, okay, some ingredients. 
which are called in Drupal plugins. This might be some primitive types like string, integer, whatever. In our case, it might be a butter, milk, anything else that might be needed. Then, anyone knows what this might be? The list with ingredients? Recipe. Recipe, correct. All right. In Drupal, it's called definitions. So we have ingredients, recipe, plugins, definitions. Cool. So we have ingredients and recipe. Who else is needed here? The third component. Who is doing the magic? The chef. The chef. Yes, correct. And the Drupal is called manager, the type data manager. So we have these three main components here, ingredients, definitions, which is a recipe, and a manager. What the manager is doing? Very important stuff is that in the recipe at this point, we do not have any values. We just have the ingredients. And the manager is injecting the values into the recipe. And as a result, as a result, we can get an instance and something more complicated, right? And this instance, what can it be? It can be, again, an ingredient for something more complex, right? So we can imagine we have a list of dishes, a list of people we have done, brought this together as a beautiful, beautiful dinner. And then if we have a beautiful dinner, people might get to know each other better. And then they maybe go to vacation to Bulgaria, whatever. And in the very, very end of this whole process in building more and more complex structures, we end up with marriage, <laughs> which is very complex structure. Um, yeah, so that is how things are working in type data. OK. Good. Code example. I've chosen something very straightforward, I guess, which is Friday, but before starting, um, because it's IT, I just want to know that we are standing on the same ground. Everyone knows what the fried egg is? More or less? <laughs> hmm? Okay, so fried egg is simply this, <laughs> to be clear. All right, so we will try to design the fried egg sunny side up um, in type data and Drupal. Cool. First of all, what do we need? We need an ingredient. In our case, it will be only one. Let's say this is the egg, it will represent it as a string the definition for it, and then we can set the label that this is sunny side up fried egg recipe. Cool, so we have ingredient and recipe. So then we only need a manager, the chief. So we are grabbing the type data manager, and the manager, as I said before, is injecting the value, which is one egg, into this. And as a result, we have this instance of, of the fried egg instance. What we can do with it? We can get the value, which is one egg, we can get the definition which uh, we are relying on, uh, get the data type, get the label, and so on. So we can see already that it's way more easy to be machine readable, isn't it? Cool. Uh, but I guess we can do better than this. Let's imagine the fry deck should have some more ingredients. I don't know. Um, maybe we can use some salt and some per butter, whatever. By the way, anyone here is from Bulgaria? Okay, so I will use your expertise there. Um, so how you call egg in Bulgarian? Yaitze. Yaitze. <laughs> Polish is yaiko, and yaitze is very funny. Um, how you call the um, pepper? Piper. Piper. It's pepper in Polish. Okay. And butter? Masło. Masło. Same in Polish, good to learn some languages still. Um, all right, so we have these ingredients. As you can see, it's um, the first level of complexity because we get some primitive and wrap them with the definitions, simple definitions for them. Next step will be preparing, finally, the bigger recipe for our fried egg. And we are using map data definitions and things are starting to get complicated here. You may ask me, come on, man, what's the map definition? The simple answer is, do you remember the giant associative values in Drupal 7? There you go, this is the presentation for that. <laughs> so you have the map, uh, and then you can set the label, you can set properties for the map, which you may imagine like uh, this rose in the array. Inject uh, the previously prepared smaller pieces, the le complexity level one into them, like the egg, salt, pepper, and butter, and then we will need, of course, who? The chief, the manager. Chief manager is on the bottom. 
and on top is are the values for our recipe and the manager is injecting values into the recipe and what's important here is that the whole process is done just automatically right so um, there was absolutely no need to do anything else but just prepare the correct array for our previously prepared data structure and all the correct values are going to be assigned to the correct uh, properties in the map definition cool so what we can do with this Friday, uh, Friday instance right now? Again, you can get the definition, get the label for the complexity number two, then we can easily traverse down to the complexity number one, get the, ins uh, get the um, ingredients like salt, butter, get the values from them, get the uh, labels and so on. So you can see how easy it is to traverse up and down throughout the structure, data structure, just by having this representation, which, is, uh, which was not so obvious in uh, Drupal 7 apparently yeah so um, because we are heading up to finally the entities in Drupal and how they are built on top of this API I decided to um, use some icons to make you um, to make it easy to understand so we will get the ingredients recipe in chief ingredients is this egg with this dinosaur whatever it is the definition of recipe is a recipe, is a recipe, and then we have this manager who is doing the job. So how would the um, how would our Friday representation look like then? Ingredient number number one, and all the ingredients that we've used, butter, milk, whatever it was. Then we can we are wrapping it with this uh, complexity level two recipe. And then manager is doing its job injecting values that we need, one egg, two egg, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, whatever it might be. And as a result, we are getting instance of another plugin, another ingredient, which can be then used in even more complex structure. We can have fried egg, um, milk, whatever, then it's with the manager it might be a great breakfast. If we have great breakfast, uh, we can then do even more complex structure more and more and more and then we can end up with marriage and then if we have marriage we can probably we can have more people on the earth more people more complex structure and the end we may decide to we want to occupy on Mars why not <laughs> yeah so this is how you go from simple egg to the occupy on Mars using the type data terminology right cool um, yeah, so entity on top of type data. This is the goal of our today's presentation to let you know how things are built on top of this API. Um, probably I can just use this image. The first turtle is simply our API. And then comes another one, like a field API, whatever it might be, and asking if he needs help and somehow dunk is on top. And then comes another, another, another APIs, and all these guys are piling up on top of our API. Just don't ask, this is how things are working here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, whenever you are using Xdebug or whatever, you are debugging some data structures, you might expect some things may look like this, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so again, let's have a look what the, um, what the entity uh, looks like. I will, I'm going to use again these icons, uh, of course the, on the top corner it's not visible, but the, uh, these are the same icons that we've used previously with the Friday. So, as we know, the entity consists um, configurable fields and base fields. So base fields simply are, we may expect some recipe for them. The recipe is base field definition or a base field override. Base field definition is a simple recipe. The override is the same, but uh, whenever you will change anything in the base field, it's going, it needs to be a configurable to be able to export it into the YML files. And then, then comes the manager injecting some values into it. You might expect field item list for it. Cool. And let's have a look on the configurable fields. Um, this is a different story with the um, recipe for them because as you can see there is a field config uh, but the field config is a configuration entity that implements data definition interface so it plays two roles here B besides being the recipe for the configurable fields it's also a config because we would like to export our custom fields 
right? So we have best fields, configurable fields um, as a field items. Then we are wrapping them with a more, more complex um, definition recipe. And this recipe is called entity data definition that extends complex data definition base. Come on, a lot of hard names here. But I've put in the blue color everything that is coming straight from type data. So as you can see, the recipe for entity comes straight from type data, from the complex data definition base. Then when we inject some values, we might expect some, again, new ingredient, more complex ingredient, which is entity adapter. You probably heard this naming a lot. So the entity adapter is simply data type plugin that defines entity data type, which extends straight from type data, also coming from our API. By the way, uh, this diagram is a perfect ex example why backend developer should never be a um, UI designer. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, because I've promised you we'll get to the bottom of it, uh, we still have time. Um, let's have a look into the base fields. We might expect the type data loop play um, also a very important role there, but on different levels. Again, we might expect we will have some recipe for the um, field item. So we have field item data definition. Then we might expect when we inject some values into it, we will get an instance of a plugin of some kind of a field type, depending what the field might be, string, in our case string, whatever else it might be. String item extends straight from string item base, extends straight from map plugin. You remember this map, right? So this map plugin, because it's on blue, it's also coming straight from type data. Then we may have more of these fields, and then we can build even more complicated recipe, which is base field definition, as from the previous slide, which extends straight from list data definition, also coming straight from type data. So you can clearly see why, how often and how important this API is to build any kind of um, data layers in Drupal, right? And um, it's good to know that we have at least this API, right? Cool. Oh, I forgot. Um, then, with some values, we get the field item list, which extends again item list. So we have at least three important elements coming straight from type data here. Uh, yeah, congratulations. You are now uh, knowing probably what the API is and well, how it's playing with um, important stuff in Drupal. I have some bonus slides for you. I promise you that we will get to um, currently existing uh, core data type plugins because it's a little bit longer than this table that the community designed in the very beginning. So uh, you may ask me because we have some pretty expected, um, pretty expected uh, types like binary, date, time, decimal, um, email flow, item list, which you remember from entities, language, as I said, it was pretty hard in seven, language reference, map, you also remember from, from entities and other examples, string, time, stamp, time, stamp, and URI. You may ask me what the any is. And the any is simply, may, it may contain any PHP data for which no further metadata is able. This is some kind of, uh, you know, something that will cover anything else that have uh, no other type representation. And I've checked if it is uh, used anywhere in the core. And yes, it's used in the date time object. It's uh, hidden there. As you can see, the data definition is using the any type here. Definition is a recipe. And then you can easily see Again, we can set the label, we can set the description, class settings, um, constraints, validations, whatever we might want to attach to it. By the way, I want to um, talk about more about the decennial data type because it's a pretty fresh one. Um, after presenting this session in Page Duple Camp uh, last year, um, I was in contact with Grabber, who was on the session. He found that uh, we had this um, Drupal org issue for pretty long time, as you can see starting from 2017, that the decimal item should not use string as a data definition. And um, after conversations, uh, Gabber was kind enough to push some updates and it was quickly approved, merged, and right now I'm pretty proud that after this session we have a little very small brick added to the core. Uh, so yes, we have this decimal item then. Cool. Um, if you would like to 
Oh, we have good timing. If we would like to um, get started and working with some examples with this type data, you can use this GitHub repository. What you will find there uh, is pretty good examples uh, of primitives and maps. The other two are still still not ready. Um, I'm going to quickly show you some examples. Hopefully, anything is visible. So again, it's pretty uh, similar to what I've um, previously showed you. It's on the top, we have the manager. Then we are creating the recipe, which is definition based on primitive type, which is email. And it's clearly visible that we can add a constraint, which was not so straightforward in Drupal 7 back the day. We can add the constraint. And then simply it showed how uh, the um, type data manager is injecting some values like the email and how to validate that. Um, pretty nice example when you would like to know how it's working. Then uh, some example of maps. On the top you can see the map definition. And then uh, you can set some properties. The properties can have different level of complexity like another data definition and so on. This another complexity level can have another uh, constraints and validations. And then using the manager, you can inject some values which are automatically assigned to the data representation. Cool. Let's go further. What else you can do? You can quickly see this um, five jars blog called Type Data and API in Drupal 8. What you will find there, these guys uh, sh show you that the most cases when we will be working directly with um, if this API is probably when we will be consuming some data from external APIs, right? So let's imagine we have this um, very simple JSON string, which is uh, the same string I was showing you in the very beginning. And we are now designing our data representation using our API to consume it. Uh, so then we have two levels of complexity. The first one is complexity level number one, where we will store the results, status, and command. The second one is a list with complexity data number two, where we will store some basic primitive types, values. Cool. How, what we will need? Again, we will need a recipe and ingredients, right? Let's go with the recipes. Uh, the first recipe will be the recipe for the first level of complexity, which is status, command, and results. And the results will be uh, another recipe of some custom demo results, another recipe. And the second level of complexity here is, oh, come on, it's not, yeah, this is the second level of complexity. It's results definition that extends complex data definition base, whatever. Uh, as you can see, we are preparing properties like title, body, author, and so on to consume the um, primitive values that we are expecting from this JSON. And then I'm not going to show you the, um, the plugins definitions because the, these guys are just, just one-liners. Then uh, we will need, of course, manager. So as you can see, the response is type data manager created based on our definition, which is response definition. All right. Then we will need the JSON string. As you can see, we have the JSON decode. And then the arrow is pointing where all the magic is happening. So we are consuming this JSON string from the API just using one line. So we have, because we've created this data structure using our API, it's just one line to consume all the data. And there you go, we have it in Drupal. We can do whatever we would like to do with it, right? So you can see how it can boost your job you are working currently on, right? So for example, consuming the API and then if you have the structure, you can traverse through it pretty easily. You can create a node from it, get on whatever level of complexity you would like to get with, with it. All right. Um, I guess we are done. Hopefully, these three images will f icons will stay with you in terms of whenever you hear type data. Imagine these three icons. So you have, you have this um, ingredients, recipe, and the chief, which is some um, manager. And that should be good enough for you to be a way better Drupal developer, I guess. So um, thank you, and um, listening for, for questions.
don't be shy. Uh, if anyone has questions, just tell, tell me to bring the mic to you so you, we can record it. We can always, you know, open the uh, Daniel Sipos book and try to read this chapter. <laughs> yeah. All right. And, uh, you know, I'm still here. Uh, so whenever you uh, find anything um, interesting for you, feel free to ask. There you go. Can you pass it on? The one hero for today's session. Uh, hello. Thank you for the presentation. I'm wondering whether you had any use cases to use type data without uh, entity. Um. Uh, the most common use case, as it was showed in the um, 5 just blog, was probably consuming external data mm -hmm. to uh, build the representation of it to be easily then injected into our representation. So that was the most probably often used use case in my case. Mm -hmm. Nothing special magic here, you know, it's very low level and um, anyone? All right, um, I'm not going to keep you longer. We are, it's Friday. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you later.